Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh brothers and sisters welcome to Iman channel and welcome to talk to me here we are discussing uh, sorry on on talk to me every wednesday we discuss uh, topics that are pertinent to the muslim community and pertinent also to the wider community and today is no different brothers and sisters you can join the discussion as always by calling in on the studio line which is 0203 5150769 now you may be wondering what is the topic of conversation for today's show uh, the topic brothers and sisters is single parent households and i suppose also kind of as as an umbrella term and, and the things that come underneath it. Um, so for example, divorce, um, raising children in a single parent household and, uh, and topics of, of that kind of nature. Um, to join me on the discussion today, uh, we have brother Jamal Richards. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. And uh, our brother Jamal will go into it uh, kind of a lot more, but um, has, has, has done some marriage counseling and stuff. And he's very experienced in marriage counseling himself. Um, so it'll be very interesting to hear from the perspective of a counsellor and we also have sister Umrah Mesa, Assalamu Alaikum, Alaikum. Alaikum who Alaikum. is a community worker so brothers and sisters it will be a very very interesting episode inshallah and let's get started with the discussion uh, straight away so Jamal, oh, sister Umrah Mesa um, look single parent households uh, if, we, if we take it back a second we kind of start by talking about divorce mm. right and I suppose marriage and divorces there has been a huge increase in divorce um, recently and um, the Office of National Statistics has shown us that in, I believe it was 2017, there were over 101,000 divorces uh, in the UK, in England and Wales. And even though this was shown as a slight decrease mm. than the year before, that's still a huge number, is it not? Is it not? Yeah, absolutely it is. Uh, Sister Mesa, Mesa, you was mentioning something earlier on as well about those are the stats that are being recorded, but... You know, obviously, we're saying that it's actually bigger than that because of the ones that are yeah. not recorded. Because um, the majority of Muslims um, don't really get married legally, so they have um, Islamic papers, and so um, this doesn't show up in the statistics. So, unfortunately, the, there's actually a rise in uh, divorce in the Muslim community, especially in the UK. Subhanallah. Yeah. And um, Jamal, kind of, you know, you've been doing uh, marriage counselling for years now. Um, have you yourself seen an increase in in your sessions and i, I know all of them are, are, are private sessions but have you seen an increase generally of the topic of uh, divorce or discussing divorce come up uh, more so in, in recent years yeah absolutely i mean um the rate is it's actually it's always been high anyway okay. um but it just seems to be getting it's increasing and for different reasons and sometimes like even new reasons are being in, introduced now as to why marriages are not lasting so uh it's quite sad actually uh and just to correct you as well bro because i'm not actually a, a, an active counselor now i don't ha actually have sessions okay but it's just in the years of having my marriage service sure. and stuff like that then obviously I, i've come um, i've had to do it a few times and uh and i've learned so much as well subhanallah because you know obviously we're just human right yeah. so what happens is you'll always find that most of the cases are the same. They're so similar that, you know, you help one person and it, it just goes right across the board. It's about everyone's understanding of what they're supposed to do in that marriage and what their, you know, expectations maybe should be. So it's interesting. Well, let's kind of talk about that. We're talking about here about kind of the expectations of a marriage. Uh, and, and sister, you were mentioning that the divorce uh, rates have increased uh, I suppose drastically in, in the Muslim community. Can we can we put our finger on on, on why is there is there is there a pattern as to why divorce is increasing in the Muslim community? I think um, it's because it's really easy. Okay. Um, you just have to pronounce talaq, and I mean I think also um, social media uh, doesn't really help. Where um, a lot of mar married couples, especially young people, compare um, themselves to people on on the internet you know and they say comparison is the thief of joy mm -hmm. um also i think um unrealistic expectations where young brothers uh, even older brothers have um, unrealistic expectations of the sisters and the sisters have unrealistic expectations on the on the brothers and i think also um this um notion of there's plenty of fish in the sea mm -hmm. doesn't really help so uh, uh, brothers a lot of times we find unfortunately in our community before the brothers actually even divorce he's already got two or three sisters lined up so um because uh, marriage has become so easy um you know we've websites and marriage sites, you know, marriage has become so easy that people are quite confident to throw away the actual marriage that they're in. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember reading a quote that, that really hit me once and it, was, it said that, uh, it was a quote from an elderly lady um, from probably 
two generations above me, so that like, would be like uh, my grandma's generation. And what she had said is, um, I lived in a generation where when something was broken, we would fix it, not throw it away. Mm. And and that what she is seeing kind of as she is grown older is that we're kind of more likely to to throw things away as a as a metaphor rather than try and fix it. Yeah, of course, but there is, um, you know, it, it's common, but sometimes the um, it's based on sometimes demographic, uh, sometimes it's based on age as well. Uh, so, you know, you might find that there might be, for example, you know, people might argue that reverts divorce very easily because of the mentality they have about how easy it is, as you mentioned before, mm. easy, easy in, easy out. Um, but then, obviously, there are other factors as well. So someone who's maybe from a family of, uh, you know, their history goes back quite a way back. But even then, <laughs> maybe as you, as you said as well, you know, social media, the expectations change, and uh, then it, it does create a lot of problems. See, one thing that I think mm. I would probably um, like to chime in on is that I myself have noticed that I think the younger generation mm. has perhaps increased in, like, showing affection to spouses or, like, it not being seen as um, weird to show affection, for example, to your wife inside the household. Um, so as we know, it is um, recommended that we, you know, we should like um, we shouldn't make our children, for example, feel that, um, that 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 marriages don't happen, and you know, like oh, that's your mom, and this is me, and we're kind of completely separated. But if you see the old the generation above me, mm. what I've noticed, and, and again, it's just on my pure observations, is that you know, affection wasn't shown. You know, it was it was something that was hidden, even kind of in, in the household. Mm. It was just to a small, a small, a small part, like 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 holding someone's hand, like holding your wife's hand, mm. and stuff like that. Whereas I, I feel like it's kind of promoted now, and and so I'm trying to counter the argument of, for example, you know, divorce being easy. I would kind of argue that it's easier to show affection because it's not seen as like weird anymore. Mm. Do you understand the, the point I'm trying to throw out? Yeah, I I do I do, uh, I, I guess. Uh, yeah, think about, for example, the, the older generation, my generation, yeah. not older, for example, and, you know, you might get a really nice, stable situation within a household. Uh, you know, you've got the mother and the father, and the way they show their infe affection might be in different ways, so maybe they won't be, you know, sitting very close, watching TV together or whatever, but just their interaction, it makes that child grow up with that s sense of security um, that they would want to, you know, continue, uh, adopt it and continue. But in terms of that type of affection that you've mentioned, that is an interesting observation. Obviously, you, you know, what would the reasons be? I don't know, maybe it's just a... Perhaps it's a cultural thing. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's outside of the culture. Maybe it's uh, adopting maybe other cultures or something like that. I don't know. It all depends on, on how you mean with that affection. You know, maybe, as you mentioned before, things like flowers and chocolates yeah. and stuff like that. But this is really nice. Obviously, people people understand now that this is what really works with marriages. I think also it's about pressure. I think um, the, the modern Muslim person is on faces a lot of pressure that maybe um, the older generation didn't, which is to look good, mm -hmm. to have um, a lot of money, to have a nice car, to be a mother or, or to be a, 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 a caregiver, i.e. the father. And I think a lot of uh, young people um, break under the pressure, whereas before it wasn't so much. You didn't have to look like a glamour model and still be um, a housewife. And now a lot of your sisters have to go out to work. Um, so it, it's a lot, I think, being in, in the West and being a Muslim mother or, an, or a practicing brother has a lot of um, pressures that a lot of people buckle under, unfortunately. Well, we mentioned earlier the topic of kind of expectations. How important is it pre-marriage to kind of sit sit down with your, your future spouse and, and set out your expectations and say, look, this is what I, I, I am expecting, this is what I'm not expecting, this is what I can provide, this is what I can't provide, kind of thing, to perhaps iron those things out in advance? Um, yeah, I think that's really, really important. Like mm -hmm. I have got four daughters and, and um, I always say to them, you know, you have to make sure that the brother that you're going to marry is on the same page. So, you know, uh, whether it comes to education, whether it comes to working, uh, re whether you want to make hijra, how strict he is, how if he's if he's uh, really practicing, if he's moderate, you really need to be on the same page. And un unfortunately, a lot of times, um, young people don't ask these questions. They just, you know, um, ask. They think a lot about and focus on what the person looks like, maybe, and and that's it. They don't really ask the really really important questions. Something. Uh, as simple as how many children do you want could end up breaking a marriage. 
Yeah, you know, right. and I think, and it's not just the young people. I think you know, we had the the uh, rise of divorce is also people in their thirties and forties, and uh, yeah. you know, and that uh, that comes from I think um, maybe brothers or sisters uh, get weaker in the dean, they're not practicing as much as they were before, and the the couple are not on the same wavelength. Sometimes sister becomes weak, and mm. and from that they divorce. Sometimes the brother becomes weak. So you know, it, different age groups, like the brother said, have mm. different problems. Different problems. So they're not yeah. all exactly the same. The young people, it's more to do with um, superficial things right. and older people it's more to do with Dean okay. um, and Hijra, Hijra is a big one where um, people in their 30s they're not coming together in terms of where they, whether they want to stay in England or leave um, these kind of things so I, I think that it's not one answer fixes all a very interesting uh, observation, Jazakallah khair, sister, and Jazakallah khair, uh, brothers and sisters, we'll be heading um, over to a break uh, in a few seconds, uh, but, but when we do come back, we're going to be discussing, you know, the idea of uh, divorce being uh, really easy and perhaps us rushing into marriages. Uh, there's a, a bunch of things that we uh, are really interested in talking about today, and especially the idea of raising children in a single uh, parent household. Let's say, for example, you know, a divorce has happened uh, for whatever reason. Um, what is the best way to, to, to raise the children? How, what effect does it have on the children? Um, and you know, how do you balance your time uh, with the children, with both of the uh, the parents? Brothers and sisters, we'll be back very shortly, and we will see you after the break to continue this discussion. See you soon. Assalamu alaikum.
Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters, welcome back to Talk To Me. Remember, you can join in on the discussion today. We are discussing divorce and single parent households and the effects on both men, women, parents, children uh, and everyone kind of involved. Uh, the number to call is 0203-515-0769. As you saw before the break, we are joined by Sister Umar Mesa and by Brother Jamal um, for this very, very important discussion. Uh, and Sister, we'll, we'll take it back to what we were kind of discussing just before the break um, and the idea of preparing for marriage uh, before actually uh, the marriage itself, especially for young people. And you were mentioning um, something quite pertinent kind of during the break. Yeah, um, I think that um, Britain should take a um, uh, leap out of um, basically what happens in Indonesia where um, they've made actually compulsory where young people do a, a course, a marriage course. So in, in that course they teach them how to um, be married, how to have patience, um, they do um, group sessions with them, questions and answers. And I think it's something that maybe, inshallah, um, the messages should take in and do uh, you know, so offer that course to the Muslim young people because at the end of the day, a lot of young people end up in divorce simply because they don't have the tools to um, continue in the marriage because marriage is is uh, a union of two people, two personalities, two opinions, two, mm. you know, two human beings becoming one under one roof. And so it's, it's a massive change and a lot of young people can't cope with that, so hence divorce. Jamal, do you think that this is something that should be made compulsory? Yeah. Or could it be seen as slightly patronising perhaps? I don't think it's patronising at all. I think it's a very good idea because um, the other thing that it addresses is the fact that in many cases um, in marriage uh, pre-marriage interviews um, people tend to put on a facade and um, you know they, they, they will exaggerate about their character and people also will maybe give um, an exaggerated testimony not necessarily a forced testimony but an exaggerated one so what happens is within the, the process at the moment is very very it can be very quick you know for example you sit down with the person for half an hour and then in that time you can determine that oh you know he's a really nice brother, mashallah. Um, you know, but you haven't uh, you know you haven't travelled with him, you haven't spent time with him, done business with him. So that marriage now, what happens is it, the, you know the sister in that instance she finds out in a very you know shocking way that this person that she's married is not the same person that you know she thought he was, and vice versa. It happens the other way around as well. So that's what that you know that course would really help with that because over a period of time people tend to break down, you know, so they put a facade on, but then you start to, you know, etch away at that and you start to see the real person after a period of time. So I think it's a brilliant idea. Jazakallah khair, Jamal. Uh, brothers and sisters, we have a, a caller on the line, so we'll take that question, inshallah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, sister. Uh, what would you like to say to our panelists, uh, our panelists today? I just wanted to say, um, it's great that a sister come into the show today. Alhamdulillah, I was listening to her and Mashallah, she said about hijra and how you have to have the same partner on the same page, otherwise you can't get along, it's, it's going to be difficult. But I also wanted to mention that in the Western society that we all live in, we do have a lot of nafs as well and desires, and if it's not been practised and controlled, it's going to be a lot of fitna in your household, like the TV, the magazines, anything, even your mobile phone, yeah, and young children, well... Even young teenagers, what do they do? What do they get up to in the bedrooms? It's, it's wrong. They're not like... It's, it's all that... And see, all that um, fitting and facade has been brainwashed in the brains and they don't know how to behave. They don't know how to get out of it. But end of the day, it's all about just... It's, it's helping them to get out of it, isn't it? Sure. Jazakallah. I also okay. wanted to say, I, for myself, I find it very difficult to... Um, get a husband because a lot of the times I feel like I'm a strong lady. I don't want to have a husband because I've been in my fitna times. I had a partner, but I never got on. And I just find it very difficult. And I actually look up to um, Mary um, Mariam, and she never had a husband. Sometimes women don't really need a husband if you don't want one. But I also want to say, see, in the Western countries, when they um, say you're not allowed four wives, what's wrong with that? If a man wants it, he's going to treat them fairly. If it's going to keep the fitting and facade away and look after four women and have children and families, what's wrong with that? As long as the women are all right with it, why Th does it not happen in this country more often? Thank you for your uh, comment, sister. Sister, I have a question. Um, you were mentioning kind of about the idea of um, perhaps not wanting to get uh, married or sisters not wanting to get married. What do you think about the idea of that was kind of being proposed on the panel today um, that, you know, we see in Malaysia uh, and countries like Indonesia where um, pre-marital training can take 
place so that a kind of a man and woman can really get to know each other and understand what they're going into together, the union that they're going into together uh, before taking a pl place, before actually getting married. What do you think, I think of that? That's a great thing because if it's Islamic, if it's allowed, what's wrong with it? Sure. It's better than doing it in the fitna way. Sure. It, it's a great thing, brother. Mm, sure. Jazakallah anyway. khair for calling, Sam. sister. And uh, please do um, keep watching on your TV screens, inshallah. Sist Salam alaikum. Uh, Sister Ramesa, um, yeah, so, so based on, on the comments that the, that the sister was kind of mentioned, there was a few um, different comments there, but I think a, a big highlight was kind of the fitna that, that exists um, in our society, and it's, it's only becoming more prevalent. Um, yeah, something that sounds like it's something important to kind of, kind of touch on, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, in terms of um, regulating what your children watch or what your children um, don't watch, um, it's very, very difficult um, to police what the children are doing, what they're not doing, and and you know a lot of the times the parents are, are get the blame for for their children and how their children uh, turn out. But at the end of the day, you know children have got uh, they turn into adults and they turn into adults with their own nifs. And all you can do is do the best that you can because we have to remember that we're in the West. And so no matter how much you teach your child, the minute that they're outside, especially yeah. they're in if they go to um, mainstream schools, there the bulk of their time is in a mainstream school. So you're just getting the leftovers of the child when they come home tired. Um, and and, and so, you know, all, the only advice I can give to parents is do the best you can, make dua, and everything else is in the, in the hands of Allah. Right, right, uh, right. And, and you have to be realistic as well. I mean, you know, taking the phones off them, taking the internet off them, and, and having no TVs in the house doesn't necessarily work, because what will then happen is that they will go elsewhere trying to find out um, and to, to use these um, instruments, mm. and then end up maybe getting... Um, uh, manipulated or groomed or, or used so sometimes you have to uh, pick your battles and um, you know take the lesser evil I'm not saying just let them do what they want but you have to be realistic uh, maybe you know regulate how much internet they have and regulate maybe if they're gonna go on you if they're gonna go on YouTube or whatever they do it while they're in the bed while they're in the room or have their bedroom door open um, that's the only advice because I've got four daughters and I brought them up singly a very, very good point, mm -hmm. um, sister. And, and kind of just uh, as a kind of segue off, off of that topic, um, you know, one of the things that we wanted, wanted to discuss, Jamal, uh, today was the effects of divorce on both um, a wife and a husband. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we, you know, start with the effects of on a wife, um, sister, you just mentioned yourself that you're a single parent, kind of what are the kind of effects that we're looking at for when a divorce takes place for, for the wife? Um, first, first of all, you lose your mahram, so you're then um, left to your own devices. And unfortunately, what happens in a lot of times when the sister's practicing, she's so used to being taken and brought and looked after that she's ended up. For, it's like you get thrown into the deep end because now you've got to do everything yourself, where um, your husband used to do um, everything for you. So in that that situation is is very difficult. And also, it comes to terms with the fact that the man that you was married to now is your non mahram. So you have to have a barrier there. And you know, even if he comes for the children, you have to speak to him from behind the door or uh, limit your conversation. So that transition can be quite difficult. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to sort of really control yourself and, and fear Allah in that situation. Um, and also uh, remarrying can be difficult if you can't let go of your ex-husband or if your ex-husband can't let go of you, which is often more uh, the situation when the sister does try to remarry, the mm -hmm. ex-husband turns up and causes a big fitna, it's big problem. problem. Um, yeah. And um, uh, Jamal, just kind of continuing on from that, kind of the effects on the wife and the husband as well. Um, I'd love to kind of touch on, be able to touch on both before we go over to our next break as well, inshallah. Mm. Yeah, so obviously um, everything the sister said, alhamdulillah, you know, it's, it's really, really, um, uh, it's profound because, as you said, like, the effects can be, you know, we hear sisters, for example, saying that they haven't got married in 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, and sometimes they get greatly put off marriage, um, which is a real shame, subhanAllah. Uh, after divorce? After divorce, okay. yeah. Uh, depending on the circumstances of their divorce, um, you know, and even for, for some brothers as well, you know, they, maybe they've, they're, I don't know, they're, their confidence might be knocked as well. Um, they feel that they, you know, they, they didn't, uh, you know, produce the, the goods in terms of, you know, being a good quality husband. And, uh, you know, all of these sort of factors, but I, Unfortunately, it seems to always be the sisters who end up worst off 
um, because for, for the brothers it's kind of easy. Again, we mentioned about this whole facade thing, being able to just go out there and pretend to be something that you're not. Uh, so he may carry baggage in a different way to how she carries baggage. He may carry baggage in a way that he will go on pretending and just maybe having a string of divorces, um, whereas she will have baggage in a different way where she will be put off marriage and it will take a lot to maybe to reassure her that it's okay. Um, and then when she finally gets reassured that it's okay, some other, um, you know, I can't find a, a decent word to use for him, but, um, you know, some other guy, brother turns up and, you know, just makes it even worse. Uh, so these are the kind of things that we have and to... And also um, the social stigma. I mean, like, if the sister's been divorced once and she remarries, she's then all, a lot of the times introduced her the sister's been married twice, and if she gets married three times or four times, it's like there's something wrong with the sister, whereas where it's yeah. brothers, they're prolific marrying, yeah. they're divorcing and marrying, mm -hmm. and it's never even mentioned. And it's not, it's not, a, it's not a thing. So uh, this is hence why women take much longer to remarry because uh, they have to uh, try to make sure that this next person they marry they stay with, which you you can't mm -hmm. determine because that's in the qadr of Allah. So you know, mm -hmm. women get treated a bit differently to women in terms of divorce. Yeah. yeah. Brothers and sisters, after the break, we'll be discussing the effects of divorce on the children um, in a household uh, and how the children can balance their time between the mother and the father and how uh, single parents can raise their children. Uh, so inshallah, to be uh, here for the discussion uh, of the children, brothers and sisters, do wait and uh, stay tuned. And we will see you straight after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters, welcome back to the show and we are, as you guys are aware, discussing the topic of divorce and single parent households with our panellists today. Um, and now we want to shift over to the discussion of uh, children, in uh, who, the children who are, I suppose, um, involved in, 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 for example, divorce. Mm -hmm. um, I know myself, the, the, I, I was raised, I suppose, in a single parent household after the first kind of few years of my childhood and uh, I, I don't know if I was like one of the lucky ones but I've had a, been blessed to have a great relationship with both my mom, mother and my father um, even once they had separated and um, and I have good memories of that you know my, my dad made the effort to, to always come and take us to Jum'ah and etc um, but, but but what are some of the effects that can I suppose on a psychological level take place uh, for a child when they when their parents do separate Jamal? I mean, that's such a, a vast question because um, it, there's so many different ways that a child's going to be affected. Uh, for example, if it's, a, if it's a, a male child, if it's a boy, uh, all the things that he will hear at school about his friends and what they did with their dad over the weekend and stuff like that, it makes them mm -hmm. feel very bitter. Uh, and the way they grow as well, they grow very, very bitter as well, and the effects can be seen in many different ways. And, you know, for for, for daughters, I mean, maybe Sister Umar and Mesa will be able to you know, elaborate even more, but I, I would imagine that she may have certain, well, it could happen, where she could resent men because of the fact that her father, depending on the circumstances, if he left and didn't even bother about his daughters, then she may not have a very good uh, impression of him, but you, you, of course you know better. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's not just my daughters, but um, in, the, in the community that I come from, uh, divorce is rife. And what often happens is that how, uh, when the parents first divorce, they uh, then get into a tug of war with the children, and the children unfortunately get used as a pawn. Mm. So you know sometimes the father doesn't get to see the child. Sometimes the, the father doesn't want to see the children uh, as a punishment for the mother. Sometimes the mother, if the father's remarried, refuses to let him see the children, and so on and so forth. In terms of their psychological. Um, Effects. It is quite sad mm -hmm. uh, for the boys and the girls because um, you know you, your early early years are, are are your most informative years, and they're the years where you make uh, a lot of your your personality gets made. And so when children from broken homes um, see their parents fighting, uh, in and amongst that, there's a lot of lies, there's a lot of deceit. Mums tell their children to say things that are not happening to the mm -hmm. father and vice versa. Mm -hmm. The father says bad things about the mother. The mother says bad things about the father. And then you have um, the disappointment that the children children have when the father stops coming around you know I can't um, count the amount of times my children have sat with their jackets waiting for their dads to come yeah, yeah? and having to fall asleep on the settee and that's uh, I would say 90% of, of children grow up with that and in terms of how they the, the females um, end up growing up they end up growing up like really really strong women but um, maybe a little bit too independent where they feel like they don't need a man, they don't need a husband and when you're practicing that kind of like doesn't doesn't um, go hand in hand with Islam sure. because they feel like well we've made it on our own, we've done everything on our own so like I drive, my daughters drive uh, and so uh, they've had to do everything on their own mm. and so sometimes that can end up being more of a hindrance in a relationship um, because they don't value a man or because they haven't had ma a man around. Mm. You know, what what kind of uh, support systems does the community or should the community provide to uh, to children um, who come from broken homes, and or, or should they even should it should it you know sh does it mean that kind of parents should actually ensure that they put more of an effort because they know that they're now separated? I think the best thing that the community can do is to to hold, for example, if it's a father, um, you know, hold him accountable. He should have some sort of accountability so that he, it doesn't become an easy thing to neglect his, his children. Uh, but I can't think the community, I can't see other ways where he can actually help because it's, it's really about the person and instilling that sort of sense of responsibility in them. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely know. agree. I mean, so uh, for example, in the, the local masjid where where we where we live, say Labrador Go, for example, mm. the brothers uh, they congregate there and they pray together, and it's it's well known that the brothers are not looking after their children. So, uh, brothers from the community should speak up and say, "Akhi, Subhanallah," you know. 
take your children, support your children, you know, give them money, take them out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is what Amr al Ma'ruf and Nahi al Munkar is. It, you know, it, we are a community, we want Ummah. And in terms of physically helping, you know, if, you, if there's boys, take them swimming, take them camping. You know, like, Alhamdulillah, I didn't have boys, but I, I know a friend, friends that had boys and they used to uh, hear from the community that they, they, for example, every Sunday there was swimming the men used to take their to take the boys swimming but certain boys never got to go because the, the moms can't take them so this is something that the brothers should do and same with the sisters if the sisters if the sister um for if there's a male single parent there are not many but there are the sisters then if he's got girls take her take them in pray uh, prayer with them you know do things sometimes there's uh, women that have passed away not always divorced you know look out for the girls take them shopping do things we're a community we're an ummah mm. but we don't have that and just to wrap up i think before uh, uh, when the divorce does happen i think more brothers and sisters should get involved in trying to get couples back together and this is something that we've lost this kind of reminds me of uh, um, an, an initiative that I spoke to one brother about recently. What he does is he do, he holds like father uh, father son retreats uh, because he found that in his community at least there was um, this kind of. Um, uh, battle between fathers and sons and having a good strong relationship with each other and so he would hold retreats where it's just the father fathers and sons they go and they do campaign and they do all of these kind of activities that help them build a stronger bond, bond with each other because I, I suppose there, there can sometimes be a friction between fathers and sons so seeing more of that if for kind of all family members in, in different kind of ways mm. sounds like something that would be really cool to kind of open up to um, in our society mm. and obviously we also need to think about the um, the effects uh, not just because of the act of the divorce, but be the things that led to that divorce as well can be very um, painful and damaging to the children. Uh, and, you know, I think that gets neglected as well. So, you know, the, the, the state of mind of that child after a divorce, uh, are there any counselling services that are offered just to make sure, just to be on the safe side, because that way we, we can get some sort of uh, preconceived um, uh, ideas of, in that child's head about, you know, what marriage is. That you know, they, they should be, they'd have a complete different uh, attitude towards it to understand that this is not the uh, the stereotypical the marriage. norm. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Norm. A lot of children grow up um, witnessing uh, domestic violence yeah. and thinking it's actually normal. Yeah. It's absolutely normal to, you know, to slap your wife or because, you know, my mum got used to get slapped or pushed or shoved and um, and the psychological effects of that are quite, they're yeah. quite serious because then they end up getting married and hitting their wives. One thing we're discussing on this show, um, it, you know, in its nature is this, uh, the idea of divorce and, and in single parent households. But I suppose one thing we haven't uh, touched on is uh, the idea of maybe a family that isn't divorced, um, but perhaps the father is not around. Um, a lot. Um, perhaps um, he is um, away for, for whatever reasons, uh, business or perhaps um, mm. you know out too much uh, socialising or whatever, uh, not trying to generalise. Um, but kind of, do we need to ensure that we have something in place or, or, or we advise even, even, even these people say, okay, fine, you're, you're not divorced, but you need to make sure that you, don't, that you don't end up getting divorced first of all and spend time with your family. Mm. Uh, we mentioned during the break that um, the dean is you know, the solution to everything and yeah. practicing is a solution to everything. And when you do practice and you follow the deen um, according to how it should be followed, yeah. it, you realize that everything is so nicely balanced out, you know, and, and a, a, a man is told, you know, um, we're told kind of how to spend our time, where to spend our time. You know, um, I, I remember the the narration by uh, Omar ibn Khattab um, that says a man should be playful with his wife um, apart from time when it's, when it's time to be serious, be, or then be serious. But mm -hmm. we get these little, you know, tips and, and stuff from the deen we should really take oh, from no. them because yeah. it really is the solution to everything, right? It is, it is, 100%. Uh, you know, we've always mentioned that, that all a person has to do is use um, as a model uh, the relationship between the, the Prophet and his wives. And that's the perfect model. That's the thing that really helps them to understand this is what we're supposed to do. This is how we help with marriages, uh, you know, to make sure that they are healthy marriages. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen. What people do is they just um, do their own thing, basically. I think then um, the responsibility falls on the shiuch and the imams um, when they're doing the khutbah, especially in Jumu'ah, to um, talk to the, to the young men and the older men and reinforce, you know, what the Prophet said, that he is the best 
amongst the people and he is the best to his wives, mm -hmm. to his women. And that is, that is the sunnah. And I think we, we don't hear enough of that. When we go to, women are constantly told how to be wives and how to be mothers. But I think, you know, the, the shiuch and the scholars, they need to take a, they need to step up and speak a lot more um, about this because the foundations of marriage, the foundations of Islam is the family. Why is it that it's not spoken about enough? I don't know. I, I, don't, I have no idea because, like I said, it's the foundation. It's the most important thing. The, we know that shaitan is happiest when he divorces a so, couple. We know, yeah. Everybody knows. This is the basics. Everybody who starts practicing knows this hadith. So, therefore, mm. I, I'm, I'm kind of perplexed why the shiuch and the scholars uh, don't speak about it enough. Mm. They don't That's interesting. It I enough. mean, um, one of the questions that um, is often asked when someone's going through a, a marriage um, arbitration is always asked that same question, which is like, you know, um, you kind of ask like, how's the dean in your house? Mm. How's your dean? And uh, on many, many occasions, you'll find that there isn't much of a dean. Like, they, you know, they don't pray together. They don't do um, things together. Um, and so it's kind of like the, the proof is there that this is one of the factors that help, um, causes marriages to, you know, to break down. Um, but even that being said, it is just about the understanding of each person within that marriage, the respect and the, uh, the love and consideration that they give to each other. And all of these things, you know, they, they, they just sort of play a big part in that marriage breaking down. You know, Allah says in the Quran that He puts a rahmah mawadda in, in the hearts, the love and compassion in mm. the hearts. And I think what's happened in a lot of marriages, the love and the compassion is gone. So, like, your wife, or your husband, is supposed to be your life partner, mm. you know, libes. He's supposed to be your cover and you're his cover. And so, anything that you do in your life should be to make her happy and vice versa. Mm. He's, mm. he's your king. And you're his queen, and uh, you know uh, the, the the thought that this is my wife, you know, and it's my wife for life, and I love her and I honour her, and vice versa. I think that's missing. I agree completely. I think I, it's missing. No, definitely, uh, brothers and sisters, we'll be carrying on this discussion and we'll be concluding it um, after the break. So please do stay tuned. We will see you very shortly, and please do call in and join the discussion. We'll see you then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs>
Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Talk To Me. We are discussing the topic of divorce and uh, single parent households today on the show. And we have a caller on the line. So, uh, Assalamu alaikum, caller. What is your name and what would you like to say to the panelists? Yeah, welcome to Ahmadullah. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if the panel would agree. I've been listening to your discussion. But sure. I think it's uh, a lot to do with um, community breakdown and um, youngsters are not being socialised in the way they should be is why they can't form relationships, stable relationships. And also I believe that, you know, um, there's widows as well that are single parents and they're not receiving the support that they should be really um, receiving because obviously they're going through a grief of losing their partner and then also um, having to deal with the children as well. So the whole family is affected and due to a uh, community breakdown um, and not understanding the situation that people are going through and people don't really like to ask for help either because they feel that nobody is going to understand them. So I don't know if you want to um, uh, maybe express your views on that. No, that's a, you raised some very good points there. You raised a few points, sister. Um, first of all, um, we'll take it kind of step by step. Um, you mentioned that um, the youngsters are kind of don't know how to socialise, um, I suppose, in the correct way for them to become good community members. Um, wh how should youngsters be socialising so that they can, or, or what kind of advice can you give to the youngsters um, so they can grow up and, and kind of build, you know, a strong, stable families? I, I think if, if within their own families sure. they're able to form good relationships, um, that could extend to their neighbours, the way Prophet has explained to us that, you know, the rights of the neighbours and then the communities in the masjid. Mm. You know, it's just building upon relationships. I don't think the youngsters know how to establish stable relationships within their family, like with their brothers, their sisters, sure. their immediate family, their uncles, their aunties, you know, how they should be talking, how they should be communicating. You know, people need to be able to commit. Where the technology, social media has taken over, where children are not talking together, they're talking more through their phones and through their internet. And this is where a lot of problems stems from because when it comes down to relationship, they can't form it due to them being behind the um, the the phones and the and 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 the the computers and Facebook and all the other social media that you, you know. No, what you're saying makes a lot of sense. I suppose if we're kind of living now in a community uh, more than ever where you can spend a whole day by yourself and still be productive if you've got one of these devices in your hand, we should actually put more uh, effort in now more than ever uh, to encourage uh, socialising and to encourage, you know, akhlaq like you were mentioning. Um, sister, uh, just so we can kind of keep it moving swiftly, you, you also mentioned um, the support of widows. Um, sister Umar Mesa, kind of, um, you know, how can a community kind of uh, take steps towards supporting wid widows and is there something Something that is lacking right now. Yeah, I definitely think there is. I think maybe what would be a good idea is for an organisation like the Zakat Foundation to set, set up an organisation where uh, single mums or and widows can actually apply for support, whether it's financial or physical help. Like I found that me and a lot of sisters, when we got divorced, one of the biggest issues that we had was to find a handyman when uh, the plumbing went or the electricity went, because you don't want just a random stranger in your home, especially if you're a veiled sister, and and. The these things happen like in the middle of the night your electricity would go off so if there was an organization that had dbs checked brothers or even non-muslims that were uh, and so, sorry just about you, but i just got to mention that um, and you mentioned one of the the organizations but um there, there's, there's 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 loads of organizations not just um yep. the one but um, yeah, I should, I, yeah, I yeah you feel free it, yeah. to. I, I only know that um, if you want to f apply for financial aid, you can af apply to Zakat Foundation. Sure. If you know of any others, it'd be great to inform them because there are a lot of sisters and brothers that are in need and don't have anywhere to turn to. They don't mm. know of organizations that they can actually apply to. The only one I know of is Zakat Foundation, but they don't offer um, support in terms of um, trying to find handymen or physical support. Agreed, agreed, yeah? agreed, agreed. That's that would be a good idea. It. Yeah, I don't actually think that um, there are many others, many others. There are others, though, as you mentioned. Sure. But this is a, a unique um, idea, in my opinion, 
Uh, and I think that, you know, alhamdulillah, it's really good that you've voiced it today because there'll be someone out there, if not yourself, <laughs> who's going to have their pen to paper thinking yeah. like, you know, you know yeah. because it's a fantastic idea. I honestly. hope so, because yeah. women and widows, they, you know, alhamdulillah, we are resilient and we're strong, but, you know, we're not plumbers, we're not electricians, we're not, you mm. know, um, builders, plasterers, and, and we're vulnerable. So it would be really good if there was an organisation out there, obviously, that vetted it and made sure that you're a single mum or you're a widow and then offered that support. Mm. And I yeah. suppose that also... Um, kind of creates a solution to the, those people who, who don't want to necessarily ask for help. Yeah. So when an organisation like that exists, uh, they know that there is an org organisation for that and they're yeah. not going around trying to constantly yeah. feel like they're bugging people. And, and I think also vice versa, you're right. You know, um, uh, in, in, in my family, my, uh, my uncle recently became a... What, would you is a man still a widow right there's not a, a widower widower, widower. Mm. so um, my uncle became a widower uh, as of last year mm. and um, he, so he spent the last 25 years in this amazing beautiful marriage and they've raised alhamdulillah three beautiful children and um, you know she, she was his life and she kind of uh, she she passed away kind of um, uh, surprisingly mm -hmm. and he also is left to they had a very um, a beautiful relationship where they, they had their individual roles and they liked their roles and they were very good at what they did and they had an agreement and, and so then he's now had to adopt her roles and I can only imagine that there's, there's perhaps a lack of support there as well for him to think, I don't know kind of mm -hmm. the things that she was doing, how I even how I would do that, you know, even mm -hmm. to the, the, the smallest thing like the, the, the youngest child for example, he would she would prepare all of his food for him for the day for the school, she had it, have a school timetable and um, and so, yeah, something does need to be in place where for widows and widowers, they're, they're, there's something um, or someone that they can turn to without having to feel like they're just asking people mm. yeah. um, for help. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, 100%. Definitely. Inshallah, if there's anybody out there, you know, that's, do that for Sebi Le. Because also there's a lot of brothers <laughs> that want to give time. You know, plumbers, that, you know, wh whatever um, uh, occupation he has, there's a lot of brothers that don't mind, you know, giving two or three hours a week and they can rotate mm. um, to do this for Sebi Le. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah, fantastic idea. Uh, Jamal, before we finish up the show, mm -hmm. it'll be lovely to get some kind of conclusions and, and I suppose um, some uh, suggested solutions, just like we were kind of talking about now, uh, ways in which the kind of the community can, can, can continue to help and uh, I suppose how we can move forward and now you know, we, we, divorces are always going to happen, and we're not saying that they, they, they can't or shouldn't um, in situations, but, but how can we deal with them better? Mm -hmm. um, so, just kind of final thoughts and final conclusions, sure. and we'll go over to Sister I mean, as well. I think the um, first thing is uh, regarding marriage is that um, the Sunnah, although the Sunnah is perfect, um, but it still needs to be applied uh, in the right place. So, here in the UK, the, the Sunnah of meeting someone and marrying them within a couple of days of knowing them. Uh, perhaps is not the best idea. Um, it's a better idea to spend time uh, for a sister to find out, is this person really everything that he said that he is and vice versa? So there should be a period of time where they're getting to know each other. Uh, and then that's, um, that could mitigate the whole thing about you know, the whole taking the course. Then, inshallah, um, just have patience, sub with each other, and communication, which is very, very important. Communication from the beginning of the marriage is one of those things that's going to help the marriage to last. Um, so holding something in your heart about um, uh, something that your husband or your wife does um, is not really a good idea um, in the beginning because then it becomes harder to say something and then it turns into resentment. So. And Sister Umar Mesa, um, you know, some, some final thoughts. What do you want the viewers to take away from you um, f from this show? I think um, I would advise brothers and sisters to get involved in, in, in khair and to, you know, help try to... Um, uh, advise brothers and sisters to stay together to have sabr um, before they divorce and if they do end up divorces also try to get them back together mm. try to arbitrate you know um, if they end up getting divorced and they don't get back together try and help with the children ask sisters if she's ask sister if she's okay offer her support offer her maybe even money because sometimes um, like in a lot of sisters cases where the husband was the, the, the provider and he's left she now has to go on benefit and it takes six weeks for example to go on benefit so you can or, or sister could find herself hungry yeah with no with nothing with no, no one to turn to and especially if she's never been on benefit before mm. she doesn't never know where, where she's going what she's doing so offer support i think the community needs to 
get together more, rebuke the brothers, speak to them, have your, you know, give them nasiha. Nasiha is, is part of the deen. And lastly, I think we should try to aim to have a community centre where there will be count, where, the, where a person can come, and the children can have counselling, the women can have counselling, the brothers can have counselling, you know, if they need help getting benefits. You know, we need to have one place where the community can come to and even the children, the, the youth, to, to learn about the deen, to learn how to get together. And lastly, brothers and sisters need to open up their homes to their teenagers. Teenagers mostly want to be together. Mm. So, you know, let your daughters bring their friends over, buy them um, pizzas, let them watch uh, the TV, let them have a nice evening. Same with the boys. If boys, if you let, give them the PS3, give them pizzas, le let them be in their rooms together. Alhamdulillah, obviously watch them. There's no drugs, there's no music and whatnot. Most children just want to be together. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And they won't be in the street. So. Agreed. Yeah. Mm. Jazakallah uh, khair to our uh, panelists today uh, for a very insightful discussion. Uh, brothers and sisters, this has been Talk To Me on Iman Channel. We are here every Wednesday, so we will see you uh, at 9 p.m. Uh, every Wednesday. Jamal, you'll be here sometimes and Inshallah. sometimes it'll be me. We'll be, we'll be switching shifts mm -hmm. and every now and again we'll find an episode where we're uh, together. Um, what, what? So, you know, just we, we've got a few seconds left mm -hmm. uh, before we end the, end the show. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I'd love to get some thoughts from you. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's just all about... That. I have no notes left. Yeah. <laughs> so I just need your thoughts. No, look, we're talking about divorce, right? Um, we spoke about in the past sure. about um, uh, things like domestic violence, right? There are times when, in my opinion, a divorce is necessary. Uh, I don't think someone should be locked into a marriage uh, when there's oppression and, and hate and hurt taking place. Outside of that, then we should do everything that we can within our power to make sure that those marriages are... Uh, solid uh, and that's why there are many people out there who do counseling and stuff like that um, but brothers need to be uh, more considerate sisters need to be more considerate and then when you come together inshallah just do your best just to really hold it together um, don't always see marriage as an, uh, divorce as an easy way out it's not an easy way out because if you failed in one marriage you have to go to the next one and try to make it work and if it's a failing within yourself then it's going to be a continuation moving onwards. Jazakallah khair, Jamal for running that up for us. Brothers and sisters, we will see you next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.